Good afternoon all, CamelbackTrading.org coming to you this Tuesday afternoon, November 17th. We're looking at the last two days of the SPY ETF's market profile here on Window Trader. And basically what we did today is put the SPY back in balance in the daily. Um, a lot of interesting things happened in a couple of the different indices. It was an excellent day today. Uh, I had a really good day and, I, and that's not taking two trades late in the day, which I'll show you, which I should have. I get very picky, but still, I want to go over something that somebody in my room picked up, uh, a little nuance, and this is what's awesome about the room, how you teach people to hunt and fish, and they pick it up and say it even really before you do. We open at the lower end of the range, value teetered on overlapping to lower to unchanged most of the day, it did finish overlapping to lower. We did finally fill the gap in a period that turned out to be an excellent trade for me. Uh, I want to show you real quickly the Russell, excellent day for them. So they opened in balance. They never filled their gap from yesterday. They took out yesterday's low, close above yesterday's high. So at an all-time high, they have an outside day up. That's very bullish. They have three sets of single prints, E, F, and G. So they have a trend day up. They didn't stop one time framing down all day till L period, which turns out to be a beautiful afternoon pullback low. So they have three sets of single prints, an afternoon pullback low, and an outside day up. You can't ask for more than that if you're, if you're a trader of the IWM notoriety. Very impressive. Triple Q's, on the other hand, they all one time framing up out of an inside day two days ago. So they all one time framing up at a very lackluster performance for lack of a better word or phrase they do end six and ten wide um, but no energy above yesterday's high whatsoever so back to spy and yes as far as my trade goes you know what i didn't write down m's range so let me write it down real quickly um as we're speaking so a period opened Got above the opening a little bit. We said to the room, overnight was short. If they're going to correct overnight inventory, the time to do it is then. They got above the opening and got nowhere. So they got below the opening. And as soon as they went down and took out yesterday's low, I got on board with a 361 put, decent size, and wrote it down to fill the gap. Um, it was an excellent, excellent trade um, to start the day. Then in B period... Now, this is interesting. B period really did set the tone for the rest of the day, but I got fortunate. B opened, never took out A's low. Now, we had lower value, believe it or not, then at that time. So if the sellers were strong, all B had to do is take out the A's low, go test the price probe, see what was happening, try to push, because there's not much below there. Well, they opened, literally shot straight up. And I did take a put play, again, of decent size. And it stopped before we got to yesterday's low. We had poor structure below. I wrote it down, got the poor structure, got out. Those were the 360 puts. So two trades worked out very, very nice on shorts. I mean, excellent trades in A and B period for me. C period opened. Finally, now, took out the days. Uh, I'm sorry, B's high to one time frame up. Now, I said, I'm still not convinced yet, still not convinced yet, because I thought um, we still had lower value on the day. We were still below the opening. We were back and forth through yesterday's range. So there was still indecision there. But then they took out A's high and things started to change. I did take a short, a small one to see. I didn't think we would have single prints. I thought we'd come back in. I actually lost small on that, took it off, put it to bed. And then in D period, reversed and got long. I bought the three, those were the 362 puts I lost on in C period. D period, I bought the 360 um, calls against the single prints. Those worked out. Actually took them out. Got them right around D's low. I took them off at basically at C's high because it didn't look like we were going to get much um, extension. But I did it again in E. E period came down. We didn't have singles in D, but I took it long in E period. Again, those were the 360 calls against D's low. The one time framing up in the single prints rode those up for a nice gain. Then in G period, I took, um, what did I do? I took the 360. 
I took a small 364 put. Oh, I know why. Because G opened. That's right. G opened. Couldn't take out F's high, and we had single prints. I took a 364 put. Took them right. Took them down. Took it off as soon as they filled because we were still one time framing up. Took turned out to be a very nice out on that trade because right after I fi they filled the singles, they went right back up. Now, here was an excellent trade for me. Didn't get a lot out of it. And basically what happened in L and M, I was looking for in I. Now, when H shot up and took out G's high, I was tempted to take a short play there, but I was waiting for a new high to fade. Because I said to the room, I wouldn't doubt if we could possibly have a reversal bar. Well, that didn't happen in H. I opened... Now, this was a true innovator play because, like I say a lot of times, if you take a, a, a put, like if I took that put at H's high, well, my out is if we take out the day's high and get acceleration, I'm out. So it's not a bad entry. But I took the short and I before we took out H's low, and I bought 200 of the 362.50 puts. Now, I never really got in danger when I bought it. It didn't go up much. But it didn't flush much. It flushed enough where I had a very nice trade. I bought them, I believe, at 309 I bought them at. And I sold them between three, most of them between 319 and 323 or 324. So it was a good trade, but nothing huge. Because it just, it wasn't doing anything. I, I held, you know, so I was looking for a bigger flush. So then what happened? Well... After we didn't get much of a flush, and I took it off, and it was a good trade. Fellow in my room, trader in my room, who's been with me from the beginning, said, you know, that wasn't much of a flush in I. And I'm like, you're right, it wasn't. I said, but we did hold the single prints. I said, so maybe that's why we didn't get much of a flush. We still have a trend day. So then when we traded up here in J, K, beginning of L, I told the room, I'm not 100% sure what could happen here. I said, can we do what the Russell did and have an outside day up and start ripping higher and get yesterday's high? Or because we didn't have the flush, oh, L and M going to do what I thought we might get in I period. Well, where there were buyers yesterday, indeed, that's where the price probe was. I said, maybe there'd be sellers there. We never really got up there. Once L took out K, now here's two trades I did not take and should have. Nothing big I could have because I had an excellent day up to that point. But when L took out K's high, uh, low, it did not get a lot of acceleration initially. But there's no way, no reason I should not have taken a 20 or 30 put play here of the 364s. My out would have been K's high. Well, look what happened. We finally got the flush that I was expecting or looking for in I. They not only came and took out I's low, which I was going to use as an afternoon pullback, they went and filled the single prints. So that would have been a beautiful trade. Even a small lot could have made minimum. Could have taken, so if, say I took 30 puts at K's low. 10 off at I's low before we got there because that's the afternoon pullback. We don't know if we're going to take that out. Once we take that out, where's my next? 10 out at even D's low because now it's right around above the single prints. And then once we fill the single prints, 10 out at either opening or value low. That would have been a beautiful 30 contract trade. Would have paid me huge. And then I'm like, okay, I want to take a long now around value low and yesterday's low. Well, I was out of the room, believe it or not, when it first flushed in L. Down to here. So I missed it. So that... Shame on me for not being here. I had run out for a minute. And then in M's range, I said, well, the only trade I'll take is if M takes out L's low and holds yesterday's low. Well, that's exactly what it did. I could have bought those 359 calls because I was looking at 359 calls in both L and M. I could have bought them at around $3. I tried to get them, didn't get them. M just popped right away. I didn't chase it and it went up to $3.50. So even though I had an excellent day, and I did have a, a really good day today, I missed a put play on the break of K, and I missed two longs. The first one in L, when it flushed out, and the other one in M. 
And these are great trade entries. I take the short, I'm out at K's high. I take the long in L, I'm out at yesterday's low. I take the long in M, I'm out at yesterday's low. None of them were threatened by any of that. So even though it was a very good day, I, the market didn't go from, wow, we're going high to, oh, this market's horrible. Of course not. All this was, was longs not getting much, finally flushing and shorts pushing it down. And then the same thing, back up. All right, destinations for tomorrow. We have four destinations for the all-time high. 361.92, today's high. Yesterday's high, 362.59. And then the other weekly high and all-time overnight high, which you should have. For the downside, we have nothing until today's low of 358.34. And then we have the price probe and all the others that you should have from the 13th. So our destinations, folks, we close at 360.62. First downside destination is two and a half dollars away. First upside destination is a buck and change, a buck thirty. So we're gonna get some really nice chop, maybe inside of M's range tomorrow morning. And then on the charts. And I know I took a little longer, but I think it's important to explain to you guys and gals what I'm looking at. And even though I had a good day and gave you the trades I did, to show you the trades I missed, which would have been excellent also, and why I should have taken them. Balance, above September's high, very positive. Inside month up, very positive. So the monthly, even though it's balance, is pretty good shape. Weekly is up. Yes, we're inside yes, last week's range so far, but the weekly is up. Daily, two-day balance. Yesterday's high, today's low. So here's the bottom line. When we come out of this two-day balance, if it's to the upside, I think we should go and at least test, if not take out the all-time high, and then attempt to get the overnight all-time high. If, however, we take out the two-day balance to the downside, now you start getting acceptance into this four-day balance. Well, if they stay inside this four-day balance, then eventually we would look at the bottom of it and not get the all-time high, at least in the short term. I hope you had a great day trading today. Have a great night, and we'll speak prior to the opening tomorrow.